saw the introduction of the Breakthrough US-China climate change deal, which saw both parties pledge to lower their greenhouse gas emissions and collaborate on clean energy and environmental protection schemes. Can these two world powers realistically meet their target? And what measures have they already taken to counter climate change? I'm joined by Wu Changhua, the Greater China Director of the Climate Group, a non-profit organization working with private businesses, government bodies and financial institutions in order to fight climate change. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me. So the USA said by 2025 they would cap their greenhouse gas emissions, while China said they would do the same by 2030. How realistic do you think their ambitions are? The two countries are the largest, two largest emitters mm -hmm. of greenhouse gases. And uh, so obviously they need to take on their responsibilities and the particular leadership, and they've done so. If you look at China particularly, and China has been making huge efforts in terms of uh, saving energy. And uh, so in China, we had energy intensity target, and now we have also carbon intensity target. Mm -hmm. uh, U.S. on the other side, and uh, definitely has been making efforts to reduce the fossil fuel burning. And uh, just very recently, President Obama announced something called the Clean Power P Program, and uh, or Clean Power Plan. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, so by just look at both sides together, and uh, with the commitments already on the table, and also look at the actions on the ground in reality, I feel very encouraged. Even better, I hope that not only say by 2030 you achieve that, I hope yeah. that both of them will be overachieving. Um, but as you mentioned, the USA, uh, they're taking all these positive steps forward. But at the same time, um, the Republican Party, many members of the Republican Party completely deny um, the dangers of climate change. And what do you think of this? Uh, there are always people we call a climate change denier, yeah. and uh, they don't take the scientific foundations uh, for climate change. Uh, that's, that's not just existing in the U.S., that exists here in China as well. Secondly, politically, uh, I think from the U.S. side, really unfortunately, uh, there are more people polit from political side who are still denying that, not mm -hmm. only because of science scientific foundation, but more from the economic interest yeah. perspective. And a similar thing happening in China as well. Mm -hmm. So China is not like everyone say, yes, we're all for you know, addressing climate change issues. So it doesn't matter whether you know, one ind or two individuals, whatever, like it or not, it's already happening. Yeah. I'm hoping you know, Katrina, Sandy, among other stream weather events will send a strong alarm to more American people. So um, speaking of climate change deniers, um, one in particular is Donald Trump who is currently in the lead for the Republican um, leadership. And um, he actually came up with the theory that climate change is a hoax that was invented by China in order to harm Chinese, um, American businesses. What do you make of that? So I just feel it's naive, it's a funny. Yeah. Uh, I don't think uh, you know, the majority of people would take that very seriously. Uh, so that's my first point. Second point to say, even if it's, it's, a folk, it's a hoax or whatever, he, you know, uh, mm -hmm. Donald actually sees it, um, the world today is very globalized. Mm -hmm. So if you look at the China market today, most of the American companies, large ones, they're already here. And there will be more Chinese companies, actually business participating yeah. in the American yeah, you know, economic activities as well. Mm -hmm. So globalization is already, like it or not, it's a trend, it's a reality yeah. today. And the American people, in particular Donald Trump, actually needs to accept it that the two countries will work more closely together to each other's advantage. Mm -hmm. China has already established a pilot emissions trading system in certain areas of the country. Do you think we could see this go nationwide? And what do you think could be the impact of the scheme? Uh, we have seven piloting schemes, carbon trading platforms already mm -hmm. exist today. So it's a five, uh, prom uh, five cities and two provinces. And so far, they are all on track. They are yeah. all online now. And uh, each of the seven has their own uniqueness uh, because regionally they are located in different situations. Mm -hmm. The national scheme uh, is already set. And uh, the national government already said during the 13th five-year plan between mm -hmm. 2016 and 2020, mm -hmm. we are going to roll out a net national level uh, carbon trading platform. Okay. And uh, that's going to be mostly from the learning of the seven. Uh, so far, um, the USA, they don't have such a scheme set up. Do you think 
that we could see that in the future anytime soon? Um, in the U.S., unfortunately, because the political barriers and uh, because they didn't really have a federal or uh, effective fe federal legislation, yeah. so they didn't really go through uh, the federal level carbon trading mechanisms. Um, but at the subnational level, they exist. With the current uh, Clean Power Plan uh, uh, released by President Obama, uh, language is already in it, basically saying potentially they probably go back to uh, trading uh, mm -hmm. mechanism there as well. Mm -hmm. And I believe, uh, at least even short term, it's going to become more effective policy tool in the U.S., comparatively speaking, I mean, compared to China. One of the biggest events is going to be the U.N. Um, World Climate Summit. Um, what are your expectations of it? Um, as I said in the beginning, I think so far, uh, China, U.S., mm -hmm. uh, among the, I think, already 50 countries uh, officially submitted their commitments, or RNDCs, intended mm -hmm. and nationally committed, determined commi commitments, contributions to the U.N. process. And I think no later than October, uh, everyone is supposed to submit uh, their commitments. Um, the process uh, has turned out to be more bottom-up, yeah. uh, particularly compared to Copenhagen, which, which was a more top-down sort of uh, mindset at this moment. And uh, so there is more hopeful. And uh, secondly, large economies already started to set their targets, commitments on the table, and the particular demonstrated by the leadership from the U.S. and China. I think that's going to be really valuable. Um, so I'm hopeful in a way. I think it, it, it's not going to be another Copenhagen. Okay, great. All right. Thank you very much for joining me here Thank today. You. Thank you. 变化非常大可能是中国吧网上说什么那个资本主义国家排放的多实际上我没考证过我不敢说就是能源重复利用嘛